it's freezing out here. <laughs> so go get a coat. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so my mother used to say. Uh, what do you want to do with your life? I mean, have you ever thought about it or are you too busy to think about your life? But when you're young, you, like a child, you think about what you want to be when you grow up. When you're in life, you're so busy trying to reach your goal that you don't pay much attention to where your life is going, but you just do what you got to do in order to get to where you're going. And then at another stage in your life, you kind of look at your life and you say, what in the world was I doing? <laughs> and life kind of knocks you down a few times and you kind of learn to survive and you just get by. And then at some other stage in life, you realize that life was an experience and you learned a lot from it and you're kind of glad that you went through some of the things you went through. And then at the end of your life, you kind of go looking back like, what do I want to be remembered for? What was the total sum of my life about? Well, you can't sum up your life in one sentence. Your life is about experiences that you've gone through. And part of that life-giving experience that God gave you, which we call living, is the process of development. You're learning about living and living with God. So, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to be known for? What would you like people to remember you by? I know for myself, <laughs> everybody's got a different opinion of me. You know, at different stages in my life, I've been remembered for different things. I know, I remember this one time when I I fell in love. Of course, I used to fall in love all the time. <laughs> Some TV program come in, and I fall in love with the movie star. Sort of. You know, crushes. But... I remember I, I had been in Southern California and uh, just moved to Oregon and I was poor. I was dirt poor <laughs> and in Oregon you could get dirt poor. But anyways I had gotten one of the only jobs there was and it was at a McDonald's and I remember falling in love with this manager that was above me and I was just a poor you know, worker. And, uh, oh, I was so madly in love. You know, I just had this huge feelings of just, oh, this person was so beautiful and just had this adorable smile. And I would work with them, you know, job crushes. Maybe some of you have had a crush on someone you worked with. Maybe you do now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> or in church or someplace else. But I had this just crush on this person and I just loved them from afar you know and I said one of my poems that I wrote for them was there you are a star and here I am admiring you from afar you know and the distance that between us is such that all I can do is admire you because there you are a star and I remember you know just writing this taking one of those journals you know and filling it full of poems and unfortunately in my job because it was McDonald's, of all things, management could not date crew. And this was a very, very strict, I mean, so strict, you wouldn't believe how strict it was. How strict was it? It could have been kosher, if it, except it was McDonald's. But boy, were they strict. So if anybody had even thought that I had this crush on this manager, they would have immediately terminated us. And at some point in time, I was threatened with termination. and. At the end of the year, it was kind of an interesting story. But I had this crush on this person, and I remember writing them a book of poems and giving it to them, you know. And finally, at the end of the year, you know, we never dated and we never went out. You know, it's too poor, you know. And she was too management, you know, and I couldn't do anything, you know. So we never, you know, even really connected. Just at work, I always had that crush, you know, and kind of 
talked about it, you know, maybe, or flirted, but, you know, and gave my book of poems to the person. I remember years later hearing from my sister when I moved away that she had still kept that book of poems. And, you know, even much later I found out that I had really inspired her in a lot of ways, you know, that it wasn't about God, by the way, but it was just the inspiration. And that's the point I'm trying to make. That moment in my life inspired someone with the words that I shared, the true feelings that I had, the emotion that I displayed to them, and the content of my soul poured out for them. And that inspired them. Now, you can inspire someone. I learned later from my experiences in that, that I had the gift and ability to inspire people. That I could write poems or write stories or write novels or books. I could write articles. I could write things, you know, and I kind of already knew that from telling Cal I had written quite a bit. But I learned that inspiration was a powerful motivation for people to do things. Just like hope is one of those things that can keep a person going when everything seems so far from being hopeful and everything seems hopeless. Hope can carry you on. Well, inspiration can do that too because God uses our inspiration to lift ourselves out of what we see to a place where He is. And so, I determined that in my life, I wanted to inspire people that I used to say, I dreamed a dream, and I enjoyed it so much, I went out and lived it. And <laughs> I'm not sure which is the dream, because sometimes reality to me seems like a dream, and what I've experienced with God is so much more real that I would rather be where He is than where I am now. And so, you will be remembered for something in your life. You will be known as you are known when you get to heaven. I hope that you're known for inspiring people, that you're known for your love, that you're known for your hope, that you're known for your peace in the midst of situations. Because I have times in my life where I look back and I say, well, I was known as being broken. You know what? I think I still owe some people some money. <laughs> oh, well, or, you know, some fast shuffling, you know, Paper, paper pusher somehow, you know, connived and got me out of the Marine Corps, you know, at early date where, you know, I should have been in longer and I would have wound up with bennies all my life, but that might have messed up my life. But who knows, you know, you kind of go, wow, I could have been on disability all my life. But then I go, no, I would have taken myself off it. But the point is, what you're remembered for by each individual person is different, but what you're known for, what you really are known for as a person, is what you're going to be known as in heaven. You see, you're not going to look exactly the same. You're going to have all these bloodshot eyes, <laughs> scars, park marks, you know, whatever, you know, skin blemishes. All these things are going to be gone because the radiant glory of who you are inside is going to shine forth and that person on the outside isn't going to be existing anymore and you'll be youthful appearing in some ways and so as you are known so shall you be known so what are you known for today because if you're known as kind of like a busybody or a gossiper or an arguer or somebody that's just like always you know like in everybody else's business I don't think I would want to carry that into heaven because I don't think it's going to get there. So, wouldn't you like to be known for something positive? Wouldn't you like to be remembered as someone who was trying to inspire or trying to share, care, or be there for someone? What are you known for? You see, it only takes a minute to inspire someone. The right word at the right time is like, boy, a word aptly spoken is like, apples of gold and pitchers of silver, according to Proverbs. And if God wrote Proverbs, then we know that the fits. So that means you could inspire someone. I know people I barely meet on the internet are very inspired sometimes by me. Of course, 
I always tell them, give them time and they'll find out who I really am and they won't be so inspired. <laughs> Ask my wife. But the reality of when you inspire people and you conspire to try to always be not always power of positive thinking or anything, because that's kind of like a Norman Vincent Peale thing. But, you know, when you try to be sharing and care, uplifting, try to help people to lift them up, that's better than uplifting, to lift them up to God or to somehow encourage them in some ways and to help them, then you find yourself being helped and encouraged by other people too, even yourself. Works for me. I mean... I come out here and I start to share Jesus and I go, man, Lord, you know, this is cool, God. Can we talk more? I mean, I want to keep talking. You know? <laughs> Do you mind? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's the way it works for me. I start talking about Jesus and I get wound up. I'm suddenly full of joy. God forbid that I should not talk about Jesus. You know, and when I do, I become young again and filled with peace and love and joy and Man, I just want to run out and hug everybody. What can I say? The Spirit of God seems to do that to me. But what the Spirit of God will do for you if you choose to help others, to lay down your life for the brethren, to choose to do as Jesus said to do, then you'll be known for being like Jesus or being like whatever characteristic of love there is that's manifested in you. For me, I think mine's kind of like, you know, goofy. No, not really. <laughs> mine's more laughter and joy. Mine's more love, you know, that my wife thinks sometimes that, you know, maybe I'm a little tough, you know. But she also says I'm the most tender person, you know, and so kind of how do you get tough and tender put together, you know? Well, <laughs> Life makes you tough inside your tender. <laughs> but what you see, you know, right now is really who I am. I mean, maybe a little more animated on camera, but not much. You know, I get goofy with my wife, you know. You know, we call each other our own little pet names, you know, and we inspire each other in different ways, you know. She drives me crazy, and... I drive her nuts. <laughs> That's inspiration, isn't it? <laughs> but the joy of what you want to do with your life could come upon you today if you decide right now, today, because you're hearing his voice. What do you want to be known for? What do you really want to be remembered for? How do you want your reputation or legacy to be known as? You'd be surprised. You start inspiring people today and it could change from what you were into what you are. And that would be a witness that you would blow people's minds with. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. When you shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Our rejoicing is this, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshy wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know, whenever they use the word conversation in the world, or conversation in the King Jameth, what they mean is your way of portraying yourself, how you have rightly given over your self-discipline to speak correctly, not, you know, slamming or using the F word, the D word, the B word, the C word, the A word, the whatever word, four letters or more, you know. 
but rather you've chosen to arrange the way you speak. You've decided on how you want to portray your personality, and you've disciplined yourself to become that kind of person that people want to have around, that maybe come to in need, that maybe think of and pray for and pray with when they have a problem. So conversation in the King James meant that about your lifestyle choices. So how would you like to be remembered? How would you like to be someone that Jesus looks up to? Jesus look up to me? <laughs> That'd be kind of dumbfounding. Hey, he loves you. Don't you think he looks up to you? Don't you think he cares for you? Don't you think that he has your best interests at heart? Well, if he cares so much about you, wouldn't you like to care for someone else the same way? Pick someone. Blow their mind today. Go out and just blow their mind by inspiring them. You know, they say that, my wife says it all the time, that, you know, I'm famous for sending flowers. Well, when I had money, I can't do it anymore. Now I have to pick them <laughs> or grow them. But anyways, when we still had money, I used to send flowers to my wife, you know, and do things at odd times. Because I never did anything like on an anniversary or whatever, because I don't know. I don't remember those dates. But... Just throughout the normal day, you know, God would inspire me and I'd say, oh, you know, I'd send flowers to my wife, you know. She'd get them in the office, you know, as a little plant or whatever with a bear or something, you know. And she'd always get these odd things at different times, you know, that would just blow her mind, you know, because it's kind of like every night I tell her, I even say it, you know, I mean, I, I tell her how beautiful she is, you know, when she's laying down, because she always goes to bed before me, usually. So she'll be laying down in bed, you know, and she'll be reading her book. Sleeping. <laughs> she always falls asleep reading, you know, and leaves the book going, you know. It's, she's out like a light, but she's still holding the book. Snoring. <laughs> Uh-oh, she's going to kill me now. But no, before she would go to bed, you know, I'd go try to pray with her because, you know, I, I tried to get her to do more religious things that I like to think of as religious. And, you know, we really don't do everything like most religious people do, you know, because she's not really all that much into some things. You know, she prays every morning, you know faithfully and she reads her Bible every morning but at night she's kind of out like a light so I always try to before she goes to bed you know give her a kiss good night and tell her how beautiful she is and I really don't you know this is gonna sound funny because I'm, I'm feeling like I'm blushing right now am I blushing <laughs> this isn't portrayed you know I mean I didn't make this a habit on purpose and it's not something I do as a routine but I asked God to show me sometime, you know, one time something, and he did. So when I go in to see my wife, you know, she doesn't have any glasses on, you know. And I look at her, and, you know, she's all relaxed and laying down in bed, you know. And I look at her, and she just looks beautiful. <laughs> so I tell her, you know. And she just doesn't know how to deal with that. Because, you see, in her life, sadly, her original husband really didn't care for her that way. He'd been married before and probably carried scars from his previous marriage into that one. And she was never appreciated. She was never loved. And then she raised her children and, you know, she had other children she took in from the community, you know, that they their parents were all messed up or whatever. So she brought them into her home and raised them too. So she was always busy constantly taking care of all these other children as well as her own and you know she wound up divorced and then remarried and divorced you know and had gone through some experiences that none of her exes none of her husbands really loved her or told her how beautiful she was or in fact appreciated her and, you know, there's always two sides to the story, but I think women know this more than men, or sensitive men understand it, you know, if we've been changed inside, you know, that appreciation is expressed by the words of your mouth, and while you could tear someone down by being constantly bitter and, you know, kind of whatever, sadly, the father of her children, you know, the children love their daddy, you know, which is good, and I'm proud of it. And 
they like their mother but it's funny how they don't necessarily always love their mother quite the same as the father's love and I think that my wife in some ways you know felt that you know and had some baggage from it and while she had wonderful experiences with her children and you know different life things nobody really took the time to make that connection person to person intimately with her to tell her how beautiful she was and I can tell you this that the tragedy of that is that when you don't have a self-esteem and someone steals what little you have of it even when God saves you that self-esteem takes a lifetime to heal I know I was one of those very shy and very broken from my own family experiences and had God not so loved me with such an emotional love and such an emotional salvation I doubt I ever would have been healed and I doubt I would have inspired others to be healed through the ministry that God has given me to be as broken and understanding as other people have been and yet able to inspire them to give the pieces of their broken heart to God what would you like to be remembered for? Would you like to be the one who binds up the brokenhearted? Would you like to be the one who cries with those who cry and weep with those who weep? That you can help and hold without sexual advances? You know, the tenderness of a heart that's been placed in your hands and breathe upon it life again? Would you like to be the Holy Spirit inspired person who comes when there really is a need to be healed and helped not just for the moment but sometimes for a little longer what do you want to be remembered for? I hope you want to be remembered for the one who inspired someone to hang on to a book of poems all their life that they look back and probably have just wonderful feelings of wow I was loved I think that's what we all want to be remembered of, that we loved as we were loved.